Hi everybody, it's Lisa Murray here in the Sweet Life Garden with one of my dear friends, Carl from Seven Seeds Barbecue. Hey, how's it going? You recognize him. The birds recognized him, I guess, out here in the right. Sweet Life Garden too. <laughs> Got a lot of chirping going on right here in our video. Listen, we're hanging out. We're gonna get get a cabbage because we're getting ready to go in the kitchen and show you how to make some wonderful stuff. I'm gonna show Carl how to slice this guy up and put some date syrup on it with some mustard seeds and pan roast it in the oven and make a really delicious dish from this gorgeous cabbage. Check out the cabbages. We were talking about these cabbages the other day in the garden tour. Look at how beautiful they are. We're going to go ahead and harvest one of these, Carl. I'm going to just cut it off at the bottom like that. And there you go. Isn't that beautiful? That looks good. We're going to use these leaves and make a beautiful uh, sausage and rice stuffed cabbage roll. The inside is what we're gonna be cooking today on the channel. So we'll see you soon in the kitchen. Hi everybody, it's Lisa Murray here in the Sweet Life Kitchen, hanging out with Carl. You're gonna be, seeing, going? you're gonna be seeing a lot of me and Carl. We got a lot of cool episodes lined up for the 2020 year and beyond. As you know, he opened up his Seven Seeds Barbecue. How's yes, that going? Yes, I did. It, it's going good for, for what it is right now. You know, last we spoke, uh, we talked about getting the trailer. Um, that got pushed back. Uh, COVID is yeah. screwing up everything. Um, there's been delays with manufacturing. And so what I was supposed to have in December, then again in January, looks like first week of February. I've asked them to give me weekly updates. Yeah, that's so. all you can do. But other than that, we're still catering. We're still trying to market ourselves and still planning, still trying to make business relationships. Well, and I'm boogieing. Them. I'm boogieing for you. You know, yeah. I'm always doing yeah. that. So we decided, to, the two of us decided, that we were going to put together a kitchen episode each week, and we were going to come up with some yeah. fun, cool stuff to do. So I decided to do my hack on shrimp and grits and Carl has not made shrimp and grits before. I have not in full disclosure. I said I was gonna cheat and look it up. I've been too busy. I haven't had the chance to cheat. So I'm learning, so y'all bear with me today. I'm her helper. Well, you know, the thing is, is that we're all about trying to make things easy and yeah. everybody's trying to yeah. cook from home. And so I wanna first off say, although I love this Cajun spoon, I'll go ahead and show it to you. I love the Cajun spoon and use the Cajun spoon and eat the Cajun spoon almost every other week because that's how much my family loves it uh we are not sponsored by the cajun spoon maybe not yet right. they might love us enough to want to sponsor us but i will say this is absolutely right. the very best of any put together for you kitchen dish hack however you want to call it where everything's just done and you just easy breezy you find the shrimp at the store you devein them you get them ready to go and you just follow the directions on the package so this is a really good we were going to go to the trouble of doing a whole full-blown stone ground North Carolina And I grits. was nervous. <laughs> and all of that. But you know what? We had all the cabbage. And you guys just saw us in the earlier part of this yeah. episode. The garden is full of vegetables. And we had the cabbage. And I wanted to add some sides and not just do the shrimp and grits. And so we're going to do the cabbage. We're going to do some roasted carrots with some, some beets and make a beautiful salad. So Can I just say the garden is awesome? Thank you. Okay, because that's not necessarily easy to do, you know. It is awesome. I was impressed. It was my first time seeing it uh, since she's got it to that point, but I was really impressed. I was worried for a minute because I thought maybe I should have brought my boots, but um, but I'm highly impressed. Y'all Y'all created something awesome back there, Thank which is you. neat. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm in there every day. I was fussing because today in Houston, Texas, for those of you that are going to be watching this yeah. week, it's the first part of January, and we're used to warm weather, and it's not warm weather, and I don't like it when it's not warm weather. So gross and wet and goopy and nasty, but nonetheless, we have a lot of things in the garden right now that we need to be eating, and I really wanted to include the cabbage because the cabbage is so delicious, and so many people don't know how to make cabbage right. other than just steam it or maybe fry it in a pan or right. something. So I've got right. a, a lot of really cool recipes, also the broccoli, which we might do next week because there's a lot of broccoli, a lot of cauliflower coming in, and kale. So be thinking about that, Carl, because okay. there may be some cool recipes to do with that. But anyway, let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and put you in charge of the okay. carrots, because we need to get those roasting in the oven, and then we can build that salad together. We'll show you guys all the ingredients for that. So are, we, are we cutting them first, or are we well, leaving them whole? here's what I've done. Yeah, we're going to just leave them whole for a minute. Um, I want them to be softer, and then we'll just chop okay. them. 
Okay. But we're going to roast these. All I've done, guys, is just washed them and I've sliced them up. And so they're going to go down. I want you to drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil. Just do a little bit of olive oil on okay. there and then some salt and peppers behind you okay. on the stove. Sprinkle it lightly with the salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. okay. And I've got, guys, the um, oven set to 350 for this. So we're just going to do that, let that get started, and then we'll keep going with the other stuff. Meanwhile, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start putting on the bowl. There's five cups, okay? So per box of the shrimp and grits packaged, it's five cups per box. And so in this package, you'll find that you've got a container of two things. You've got the spices and you've got the grits. And I love these grits. And I love the stone ground from North Carolina, but I got to tell you, the orange color is so pretty. And I haven't found it anywhere else. I'm really, really, really impressed with it. And it, qu it, it cooks pretty quick which is also nice because if I've got everybody over here just starving, they seem to go, I don't know what's going on at your house. I mean, you've got, you got seven seeds, boys and girls. Go. He's got babies <laughs> everywhere at his house. But my boys, yeah. my husband, my Uncle Brian, and my son, James Edward, both of them, it feels like I am constantly in this kitchen. It's like we get up and make breakfast and I start working on the yes. business and the YouTube channel and everything. And then it's like, okay, ring -a ling ling it's time for lunch. It's and then I just get it cleaned up and it's like, oh, we're starving, it's time for suppers. It's definitely the most utilized room in our household, <laughs> yeah, let me tell you that. It's crazy. So I'm gonna put 10 cups of water, which I've already got in the pan over here, to boil and go ahead and get that going just so we can get, get started with it. And then I'm gonna start working on the cabbage right quick with you. All right and then we can keep going from there. Now just coat these and put these in the oven? Yes, sir. Okay, get that going. So I'm gonna move the shrimp out of the All way right. for just a minute so you guys can see what we're gonna do here with this cabbage. Cause it's gonna be a little bit to get that going. Okay. All right, so grab that, grab, grab that yes. chopping block, yeah. All right. And so, we just literally pulled this in from the from the garden. It's still dripping water. That's how fresh it is. And those big leaves, we talked about that outside too. Those great yeah. big leaves, a lot of people when they get, you know, this is how you get it at the grocery store. And that's cool. But if you have it grown in your garden, you have to think about those cabbage leaves like you think about banana leaves for making like tamales or, or the squash. You know, the squash, the leaves off of like squash or, or, or pumpkins. Yep. A lot of people do things with the leaves and the flowers. Mm -hmm. You can steam stuff in yeah. them. So we're going to do a different recipe because y'all saw the garden. There's right. plenty of cabbage. Um, but you can make all kinds of cool stuffing and then wrap them in that. You can even do chicken and do enchiladas with it. So there's a Sounds lot of good. which a lot healthier maybe for you than, than or those that are allergic to grain. It's definitely a great alternative. But I'm going to slice this cabbage very thinly and what we're going to want to do with it and i got to tell you this is the first cabbage of the season in the sweet life garden and that is beautiful i planted you guys don't know i talked to you about it on the other episode not this one but i planted rue carl was out there with me before we started taping he said you got some snails or some holes in these leaves. <laughs> and I gave him the what for look from Auntie A because <laughs> I am telling you if he'd been here last year, right. he would have realized just how holy those leaves could get. Because yeah. these leaves, here's the deal. There may be a few here and there, but no pesticides, not one pesticide. That's Micro awesome. life nutrients. They're a local Houston uh, family that has all this uh, all natural components and nutrients for your soil. Sienna mulch provided all the sand, soil, and I added soil in the compost okay. from them. But rue, the herb rue, R-U-E, is an ancient hmm. herb that they have used forever to ward off moths that lay eggs and yeah. things that like to eat. So up underneath these cabbage beds, I planted rue back in the early fall. And I want you to look at that. That's beautiful. It's a gorgeous cabbage. If I do say so myself. Now what I saw, I saw a caterpillar, and I thought, wow, let me, obviously, I don't know a whole lot about gardening. My family does, Elisa does. Um, I know somewhat about it, but I saw that, and I thought, oh, well, it's beautiful, but should it be there, or, or what, you know? And so, it's kind of just me giving her the heads up, 
but she's got it figured out because it looks awesome. And I know whenever I we were growing it. things, we had holes in all of our, I mean, they were feasting. Yeah. They were feasting on our, our plants. I, I, I got to tell you guys, I can't believe it. I, I'm just so impressed with that, uh, with that head of cabbage. It's just beautiful. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay these, Carl, down. Do just these like get drizzled too? We're going to drizzle them with something different. Okay. We got to make that something different and show right. everybody how to ah. do that. Oh, that's where the, the vinaigrette comes into play? This is the date syrup. Oh, the dates, that's and right. And the mustard seeds. Okay. See, it's a good thing I'm asking questions because I'm learning and, and hopefully that'll help everybody else learn. Along I got with it. Us. We've got a great idea for you guys, too. We're going to do a leftover special yep. next week. We're going to pull what we have left over in our kitchen, which is going to be scary. We always and have leftovers in my house. We do, too. And we're going to figure out what we can make from the leftovers. So that ought to be fun to do. Mm. This is starting to fall apart, Watch but that's not going to scare me none. Are we, are we using this piece or are you leaving this out? We there? can take as much of it. I think all of it we should try to do if we mm. can get it to fit on the pan. Let's see. All right, so this is what we've got. You guys are watching us. I'm just going to put that in there too. I don't want to waste any bit of it. All right. All right, so I'm going to give you Set that for a second. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to do is we want to take mustard seed, you know, just a normal mustard, but I want you to get okay. the seeded kind that's got the, the traditional old world style. Okay. That's about two and a half tablespoons there. And you'll have to measure that by your eyeballs like Nana taught me to do. Y'all know I don't measure nothing, but I think it's about two and a half tablespoons. It, yeah, it looks about right. And then I want you to take a dollop of olive oil to it. A dollop? A dollop. It's probably about a, a half a cup, maybe. <laughs> don't you think? I think probably about a half a cup. And then I'm going to add a little handful. I'm going to reach behind here and get some salt and pepper. Oh, I can help you there. Here. Just a pinch of each. A pinch of each. All right. All right. So I'm going to do that. How, now, how long do the carrots? I'd say we need to check them in about 20 minutes and then flip them over. We need to roll them, make sure so that they're not. So what do you think about? They've been in about five minutes. Should I set a timer? Um, no, because I don't want going off for okay, them so trying to when they're when they're watching us. Open that oven up for me and let me take a peek at it. I think well, we're, what we're getting ready to do to them, and they're going to like it, is we're going to kick it up to 400. Okay. So if you want to go ahead and do that, just All so right. you guys know, for those of you who are going to try to do the same recipes the same way in the same the same time. The cabbage needs to be in for 20 minutes at 400 degrees, and then we oh, take it back oh, out, oh. flip them over, and then drizzle them again, sure. and then put them in for another 20 minutes. So the cabbage is going to be a 40-minute deal, which is why I wanted to go ahead and get all of those, what I call hard vegetables. It's not, they're not hard to cook. They're just hard to cook in terms of how long they okay. take to get soft. So the harder okay. vegetables need to be in there longer, as you guys know. I mean, obviously, potatoes and carrots. Yeah. And that sort of stuff and, and uh, cabbage take longer to cook to be soft than uh, than mushrooms and stuff like that. So right. anyway, what we're going to do is we've got this mixed up. I'm going to drizzle this over our over this. heads. Yep. Uh, and if you want to do that, you can, yeah, do, can that, do that. Drizzle Perfect. that over. And I'm going to check on our water. Y'all get to Oops. see my drizzling techniques here <laughs> <laughs> or lack of. Y'all can see that. Let's bring it over here. To let's see, let's put it down here so they can see it. Yeah. I'll turn it up a little bit so they can see it. With our dollop of olive oil there. <laughs> you know, I remember the show or the uh, the the uh, martini talk that we did. Yeah. You mentioned something about your sister making um, extract. I believe vanilla extract. Oh yeah, extract, she loves to make the extract with which, Everclear. Yeah. Which I referred that that. Some people call that moonshine. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is my drizzle, y'all. I'm sorry. Here we go. But uh, vanilla, I'm very interested in that, to be honest. Well, I'm going to tell you what she does. I'll tell you guys, too. <laughs> she just goes to the Use grocery store. Mm -hmm. okay. She just goes, no, we have to take it out in 20 minutes and put the rest of it okay. on there. We're okay. going to so brush it the next go around. A little bit more. And then just a little call. drizzle on the first run, brushing on the last. All right. So what she does is she goes and gets vanilla beans, just like you normally would from the grocery store. Mm -hmm. right. And then she gets herself a big old uh, bottle. Yeah, go ahead and stick that in the oven. Mm -hmm. 
and she gets a bottle of moonshine or Everclear, whatever you want to call it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then what she does is she she takes those seeds and sticks them in there and yeah. pours alcohol over it and then lets it sit for like six months to a year. And it's the best. I mean, it's it's the best. I'm interested. And I don't know. I've got back here I can show you guys. I've got a, a bottle or two or three that I've been working on. Oh, ah. For about a year. The secret stash, right back there. Yeah, for about a year. And mine's not as rich as hers. She's got that, you know, you can see there's... So that's the extract. Yep, they're just beans. You just stick them in there. Oh, okay, I see them now. And, um, and you know, I'll pop it open. We can take a, a whoop of it and see if it smells good. I haven't checked on it. It smells more alcohol than it does vanilla still. It takes a minute for it to really do it. You know, you really got to put it... Put it out there and let it just sit. But um, interesting. Hers is darker. Not trying to derail us. I just thought about that. I was like, oh, oh no, remember. maybe we'll do a dessert. We've got the leftovers to do next week, though. That's so correct. we're going to be That's busy correct. with leftovers. That's I think the leftover work we're going to do is going to really help a lot of people out because there's a lot of people that have been reaching out to me anyway and telling me they need help with lunches and they need help with quick suppers because yeah. they're homeschooling and working from home. And the problem we always ran into was. You know, so seven seeds. I have now. I have seven kids. I didn't always have seven kids, obviously, but we had even when we had four or five or whatever. You know, m m trying to make sure we had enough food. But then when you do that, we tend to overcook. Yeah. Right. And so then, I hate waste. I hate wasting food. I try to to utilize everything as best possible, and. You come, you become creative, mm -hmm. but eventually, you know, if you don't get creative, you get sick of eating the that same, same thing. Stuff. So that was the deal. We we try to come up with fun ways to recreate what, and I and I know that's a common issue that a lot of people have, but we s seem to have not been able to figure out how to cook the right amount of food because we always fear, oh, well, we don't want to have not, not enough. enough. See, right. I understand. So. Well, y'all know I'm the oldest of five children in North Carolina, and Nana was the one in charge of cooking all the food. And so, you know, there was always a lot of food, but we did have a regular menu of what was going to happen. Church was on Wednesday nights. We had choir practice. Right. It's almost always spaghetti. Sunday was always <laughs> fried chicken from Hathaway's. You had to go by the Hathaway's place and pick it up. <laughs> she might make homemade potato salad, but she was not going to make fried chicken. And we had church to go to, too, so right. we were busy with that. But there was roast, yep. you know. And if yep. it was somebody's birthday or Valentine's Day or Father's Day or Mother's Day or some special day, we'd get steak. But we didn't get steak like regular steak, yep. filet mignon or ribeyes or anything like that. We didn't get any of that unless it was a special day, special time of the year yep. kind of thing. We never, I don't ever remember them making prime rib. We never had shrimp. We always went out to the seafood restaurant to eat shrimp. And that's one of the biggest challenges a lot of people have, too, about cooking seafood. They're scared to cook seafood. Seafood's expensive. Um, and you don't want to mess that up. And you don't want to mess it up. Right. Last night, we were making food, and I should have videotaped it, and I'll videotape it now that it turned out so good. But I made cream garlic mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. and I did a red snapper crusted with Parmesan. Ooh. And it tasted just like we were sitting in a restaurant. And, yeah. I, and Brian said to me, oh, this is really good. And I said, it, it damn well better be. It's $52 <laughs> for this fish. So if you spend $52 on a fish, you better it make, better turn out right. you better make right. sure it's right. Yeah. And you also need to make sure you got leftovers. Speaking of leftovers, because there's yeah. enough to feed at least three more people for lunch for fish tacos. So nice. it was a good decision to make. Tacos are usually a go-to, yeah. right? Awesome. Easy, easy. So guys, back to what we're doing here. I'm making, yeah. with, with Carl, we're gonna make a goat cheese, microgreen, watercress, roasted carrot with almonds, a homemade vinaigrette, sounds like a lot going on, um, salad. And y'all know how I feel about my beets. Y'all already know how Uncle Brian feels about his beets. Beets are always in the Sweet Life Garden. Good. We always yeah. have beets. I went ahead and took these golden beets yesterday before we did this episode today. And yeah. boiled them. I boiled these instead of roasting them. I boiled these, and just for ease of use. And y'all know how to do that. If you don't know how to do that, just go to the episode, the very first episode I think I did on the channel was how to harvest and do beets, because beets are such a staple for what we do. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice these guys up. Look how pretty they are. 
and I'm going to put them in, to, I'm going to dice them up and put them into that bowl that we'll eventually have with our carrots, yes sir, um, for our salad. And I want the salad to be at room temperature. I don't want it to be hot and I don't want it to be that cold either. Is that water boiling over Not there? Not yet. Almost. get that water going because the shrimp's coming up next and are, are we waiting to put that in the uh the, the we're going to put those roasted carrots we're going to turn okay. them how okay. long do you think they've been in there probably going on 10 minutes now how do you feel about those do they need to be taken out and turned or do you think this I, I think i think they're turnable all right you know? let me give you a pot holder there's one in this drawer oh yeah even better there we go. don't use that towel you'll burn yourself I'm scared that's too don't thin. Do that. No. Let me get you some tongs. Good thing you did that because I was just going to start flipping with my hands. Oh, no. Yeah. I don't want you to get I burned. Do that, I do that on the grill well, all the time. I know you you're know? out there at the barbecue pit master, <laughs> so you're doing. <laughs> You're doing uh, the manly that, stuff. I'm yeah. the dainty one with the fingernails uh, that needs know, to have it, a tong to do that with. <laughs> I have uh, gotten a little smarter over the years, and uh, uh, well, that's maybe maybe not smarter, but yeah. I've helped myself out a little bit, and occasionally I have to, I happen to have some gloves that are, you know, made for just that, right? Yep. Well, Brian got me those gloves that. He's so scared, you know, now that I've had those heart stents and, and I'm on that blood uh -huh. thinner, every time I get bumped and scraped in the garden, I will bleed or bruise, and everybody's scared to death that I'm going to get hurt. And so he bought those gloves that look like I'm going to be a gladiator. Do I want to sprinkle some more you can, salt for you? Yeah. Uh, those big old metal gloves, you see them, uh -huh. I'm sure. Yeah. So, like chain mail? Yeah, and it yeah. looks like I'm getting ready to go and <laughs> go, sit on a go horse with or Yeah, something. I'm going to go sit on a horse and, and, yeah, start doing some fencing or something. <laughs> but um, I don't like it because it feels like it constrains me. Um, mm -hmm. And I need to be able to, you know, feel what I'm doing with the food. Yeah. Well, I got the, the there's some, of course, you know, you got your all the food handling stuff whenever I'm serving to, to other people. Sure. Right, you know, that we yeah. do, which I kind of find myself even utilizing them in our own kitchen sometimes. But uh, also they have some, some more heavy duty, thicker, uh, like black gloves that, that you can so use. They can withstand up to so much heat, but oh. they're, they're latex without the, uh, I say they're latex, they're rubber gloves without the latex, right? So, so you can use them and still be able to feel everything that you're doing. Awesome. That's good. So, guys, I've pulled parsley. You didn't see me pull the parsley. You, if you saw me earlier today, which today is, what, Tuesday? We're going to try to do our episodes on Tuesdays. If you saw me earlier today yeah. going through the herb garden, kind of giving you an update on what the herbs are doing going into this cold spell, um, you'll see that there was a lot of parsley. And so we're going to put parsley in our salad. And it actually calls for parsley for the shrimp and grits recipe as well. So that's why I reserved out a little bit for that. Now, on the cheese situation, it's up to you. If you don't do cheese, I don't know what you could do, actually, that would make this as rich. But mm. goat cheese and beets to brine is like peanut butter and jelly. So goat really? cheese is why I'm using goat cheese on this recipe. You can use feta. Okay. If you don't like the, 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 the goat, goat is real flavor, yeah. flavorful. So if you don't like goat, the, the next go-to would be feta, um, and there's also a milder feta that's at some of the higher-end stores. It's a sheep, mm -hmm. it's a sheep freshly made feta. It tends to be a little bit less uh, punchy than what you right. buy that's already done. I'm interested because I'm not a huge goat cheese fan, but I found that sometimes when you mix flavors, mm -hmm. you know, you're surprised. Yeah, it, it works. So you're surprised. We'll see. So right. this is a full container of the goat cheese, you know, the small little rolls that you can get at the store. And you don't have to use all of it. You can use whatever you want to eyeball how much you think you need. And honestly, nice. I nice. could just stop right here. I mean, like beets and goat cheese and parsley uh, are perfectly fine by themselves. But I thought the roasted carrots would just make a little bit more of a, a prettier salad. And also, it would give us a chance to use 
some microgreens and just do a little bit more of a fancier salad. You know, you've got the shrimp and grits, which technically is a very down home, easy breezy. And so by dressing up a salad a little bit more fancy kind of brings everything yeah. together. So yeah. it's more of a, not elegant, that's the wrong word, because I, I think shrimp and grits is elegant too, especially, you know, I was in art school yeah. in Savannah. So we had a lot of shrimp and grits in Savannah when right. I was down in Georgia. I think that means that that it's up to temperature yeah now. and now it's decided it wants to be a 400 degrees but that's yep. okay because you know like everything else in life we roll with it we roll with it's everything that's right we roll with stuff, it stuff happens right exactly I think everybody knew that noise yep so i'm <laughs> going to go wash my hands in the meantime if you'll pull you know these have got the roots on them right. they're going so to go eventually nope these are going to go to the sweet life garden here shortly i bought them like this so I'm going to keep them alive, but my, my point to you is grab from this side like I did the parsley. Mm -hmm. Leave the root system in place because they'll go to the off. garden. It's just too cold to put them out in the yard okay. right now. So just take some of that and chop it up okay. and add that to what we're doing, and then I'll be right back. All right. Will do. All right. So like I was telling Elisa, yeah, I'm going to expose my knife skills here, or lack thereof. <laughs> But I've been actually, you know, trying to practice and get a little bit better. You know, I can trim a brisket and do everything that I need to do. But uh, when it comes to when it comes to professional knife skills, uh, I'm not I'm not the guy, right? Yeah. Who knows? I think you're doing just fine. Is that good? Yeah. Or you want no, no, no. It's perfect. Just a rough chop. Oh, yeah. All right. And here's the reason why I do that. 95% of the restaurants that you go to, you're going to see watercress setting just like it does. Uh -huh. But I have a problem. I have Uncle Brian, who does uh -huh. not luckily know the difference between parsley and watercress, and I try to sneak stuff into the things for him to <laughs> eat that are green. That's funny. God almighty green. It's so hard to That's get the funny. man to eat the green, That's so funny. I chop it to secretly insert it. So for those mommies that are watching us that have children that don't like green, that is a key ingredient hack to be able to get it in there because you can't tell the difference between the parsley or the watercress once it's all stirred together. And so then you added a little bit more nutrients in there. Just to taste it by yep. itself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. I'm going to take this bowl right here. Let's see what's going on. All right. We got water boiling. Water boiling. So grits are going in. Is that for both bags? That is? Mm -hmm. okay. 10 cups, 5 cups per box per the instructions. And I'm going to keep an eye on that. Get a little spoon. Mm -hmm. Carrots and cabbage smell really good. Mm -hmm. How often do you say something like that? But they do smell really good. Well, here's the um, thing. I'm going to tell you, if you put enough good stuff on yeah. anything, it's going to be good. Yeah. I mean, my mama used to say you can dress up a whore <laughs> <laughs> and take her to church. <laughs> so even that could happen. Hey, you know? What makes it even funnier is we were just talking about before we started recording how she said something and I was like, wow, I'm the only one I know that says that saying yeah you know real country sayings and i appreciate that i feel like um that's that's kind of lost right that, yeah. i miss those things because it makes you think like what did they just say uh-huh oh okay i see i get uh, it yeah. right you know yeah. but actually cabbage and carrots i do know go together uh, my wife davonda and her family of course they're from uh, her dad's side is from trinidad and one of the things i love that they do they do a cabbage and carrot kind of it's not it's not a Slaw? Slaw. It's like a slaw, but it, they do saute it. But they saute it, and then it be, they make it into a um, it's a it's a curry. It goes with the curry, right? I, I think Good. it's delicious. Yeah. yeah, I do. I mean, bring that recipe. We'll do yeah, that. Yeah, we'll do that. That was that's something I thought about. I mean, I got a lot of things I started to think about once we mm -hmm. just said, "Hey, what are we going to do?" You know, maybe we see what they want. You know, maybe mm -hmm. we'll, we'll we have so many different ideas, right? Her and I have been talking about so. We're we're developing this as we go and we just want to have fun and, yeah. and make sure everybody else has fun too but that is something that I don't like carrots I'm not a carrot person but I'll eat them if they're cooked yeah. and then I eat them like that and so 
Well, Don't you just it. stir this. You just stir the grits and keep okay. the grits going. Good. While you're working on keeping that going perfectly, and you may need to turn it down a little bit, I don't know. Just keep an eye on it because it needs to get. I just don't want it to stick on the bottom. It's this one right here. I just don't want it to stick on the bottom. Okay. I got you. Okay. So I'm going to do that. While you're doing that, rather, okay. I'm going to make the dressing for what we've got going on with our salad. So this is where we're at right now. We've got the beets, we've got the watercress, we've got the parsley, and we've got the, the cheese. And so I'm going to add to it about a half a cup of olive oil and I'm going to add some uh, lemon and I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper and I normally you guys know normally I use a lot of Buddha's hand but I went to the store and I didn't see any Buddha's hand this week and so I did find these gorgeous lemons these are Meyer lemons and they're just mm. really beautiful you know, when we we went to uh, Italy a couple of years ago, we did we you know we ended up doing a, a cruise and got a chance to go down and visit Pompeii. Mm -hmm. Right outside of Pompeii, they had this market, and I swear, Southern Italy, the Amalfi Coast, was the biggest lemons I had ever seen. Yeah, it's I'm there's turn amazing. This there's some places in this world that are just they're just crazy. Out I mean, those, those, those lemons look like small melons almost you know mm-hmm I'm gonna scoot past you and get some right. salt and pepper so we're starting to pop over here do we want to turn it off for a minute I'm gonna and turn it down way low actually let me turn you onto this one I'll right. turn that one off let me get your pot holders because right. it's good I got you it. sure yeah hot no it was good I tested it okay I learned that lesson <laughs> all right a few, a few burnt fingers ago a f yeah. ago so about a teaspoon of salt and I'm going to go okay. ahead and put two teaspoons of pepper to this dressing. And then if you want to, you can put some red pepper flakes if you want to kick it up a notch. I'm not going to do that. But if you want to, just know that you can. There's, you can really do the vinaigrette. You can make whatever, you, however you want to make it, you can make it. I'm going to scoot in front of you mm -hmm. to get the whisk. I'm going to whisk, whisk this very simple dressing up. Trying to stir and watch at the same time. I'm gonna leave this just like that. it is. You know, just stir it up so it emulsifies. See how that's emulsified with the lemon and the olive oil. So that's what all did you put in there? Lemon, olive oil, salt, pepper. Okay. All just right. really basic stuff. Yeah. You don't need yeah. it to be crazy, guys, because we've got the goat cheese, and the goat cheese is a superstar, and the watercress has got a really nice, interesting bite to it as well. And then you're going to have the flavors from the roasted carrots and the crunch from the almonds and the gorgeous microgreens as well. So very healthy, very delicious. You don't want to put a lot in. But that's why I said if you wanted to add a little bit of kick, red pepper flakes fine. But that's it. I wouldn't go any further than that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pull out of here these carrots. And I know you may have said it. How long is this supposed to cook here? It, the, uh, needs the grits to, themselves. it needs to cook. Well, let me look at the ingredients just to be on the safe side. Let's <laughs> see. So, once you tell me that, that brings up a good question. Full and water cover and reduce heat to low. Cook for five minutes. So, so reduce the heat to low and let it cook for five minutes. Okay. So I reduced it to low already. It's getting plenty of heat on low. And I do want to mention that, and I can't remember if you mentioned, you, Elisa does this from scratch you know this isn't something she she's using this because it's oh yeah you know, she's found it to be awesome that, that, well that, i'm using it because here's the other thing carl i'm using it and guys here's the honest truth youtube is a hard job it's not a fun <laughs> and and happy time every day all the time because i'm not i'm an artist y'all know that and i'm busy in the garden and i'm busy coming up with cool recipes and ideas and i'm not into editing and nor was I ever for 22 years going on 23 mm -hmm. this year into retouching photos from the studio. Yeah. So there's a lot involved in getting everything ready for each episode. And whenever, you know, it's a quick night and I'm trying to get a lot of work done, but my family wants shrimp and grits. That's how that happened. I found it and then it was like, whoa, this is really good. And I thought, why not share that with y'all? I mean, I, that's crazy. I mean, I could give you shrimp and grits all day long from scratching, but homemade, the problem is, is that it's not going to help you do anything quicker. It's just going to be a really drawn right. out longer dish than what it needs to be. So with everything packed up for you just makes it easy. 
and it's my pleasure to share with you how simple that actually is. So I'm going to take this cabbage out now because they need to be flipped over and I'm going to show you the next step on the cabbage. Mm, the carrots look good. And then, so the cabbage comes out, this is when you brush them with the remainder we're of gonna, the... Yeah, we're going to brush them down okay. and we're going to drizzle them with the dates. Oh, okay. And that's the next thing. So. Now, if you guys don't have dates, you don't have date syrup, don't worry. You can do honey. You could do, and, you know, think about that for a minute. How many people would think to put honey on cabbage, right? How many people are thinking about putting honey on cabbage? Not many, but it's really delicious. Um, you can put maple syrup. You can put molasses. You can do all sorts of stuff. I just happen to like the dates. At Christmas time, I don't know if I don't remember if we actually have edited that yet, but there's a there's a video of me where I stuffed dates with uh, blue cheese and almonds, Ooh. and that was an absolutely delicious finger food to have in the kitchen while people were waiting for the food to be finished up, and they were hungry and they could just nibble on that. So what I've done, I need to turn this one over. What I've done is I've taken our cabbage. I flipped them over like that. You see that? Flipped them over. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rest of this that we've got here, and I'm going to add a little bit because it's become a little viscous. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil more to it, and I'm going to brush it on. Okay? And then after I brush it, I'm going to drizzle it with the date syrup. And... I think that you probably won't have any trouble finding date syrup at the grocery store. If you do, like I said, you can use maple or you could use even pomegranate, uh, honey, any of that stuff would work. But you, what you're looking for is something sweet. You want something sweet to go with the mustard. That's the key. Well, that looks good right there. I, I turned, just to let you know, I don't want to get in trouble. You're not going to get in trouble. I turned it off because it was really starting to kind of okay. pop up. and it's That's cool. We'll just keep an eye on it. Yeah. One of the things I love about doing uh, the vegetables like this is that once you kind of get them going, you can then s turn tail, as Nana used to say, turn tail like a bird in the air and work on the main dish which is the shrimp and grits because you've got to get other things going right. but shrimp need to be served immediately and when you make shrimp they don't need to sit around and wait for you to finish up your vegetables and so that's the reason why i've been trying to get all this other stuff put together for us so that we've got what we need set and then i can focus on just the shrimp and grits and make sure that we've got that so this is your date syrup and it looks like it's brand new, so it looks like it might need to be. I'm gonna give that to you to look All at. Right. Looks like it just needs to be. Does that top come off? No, that, that's that's open. That's right it. There. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna drizzle. This is a hot pan. I'm gonna drizzle, and it's gonna look like. And I want you to make it look like balsamic vinaigrette. It does look like that. Yeah. We'll give you that balsamic vinaigrette look and feel. That's some good stuff right there, buddy. I tell you what. It looks and smells good. It's not going to get much better than that for a vegetable, we should say. I mean, if you were going to dress one up pretty, that is a definite showstopper. And it would make a wonderful, uh, guys, bottom. If you were going to make a French dish, you could do a beautiful bottom of that and yeah. then lay on top of it as a finished uh, dish for the, for the table. A, a pork tenderloin, mm -hmm. uh, even a prime rib might be wonder wonderful like that. Yeah. You've got yeah. the mustard, you've got the you've got the sweet of the date. Okay, so this is going back, back in, in the oven, mm -hmm, 400 still. We're not going to turn that down. We're going to leave that in here for a little bit. They are already real soft. I suspect the reason why they're super soft is because they're from the Sweet Life Garden, and they're not right. going to cook the same way as no. a vegetable would from the grocery store because it's not hard. Which is it's tender, yeah. Yeah, that means something to know about. Tender and and still dripping water, so that's mm -hmm. something to make note of. All right, so let's see how these carrots are. If they're too hot to handle, then I'm gonna start working on the shrimp first. 
I think that'll be okay. All right, I'm going to take these carrots out. And we're going to... And we're going to chop them up. All right. Now, again, up to you. Think about how you want to have the mouthfeel. The mouthfeel, you already have the, the beets that are in, you know, pretty good sizes to bite into. Yeah. So if you want to go crazy and chop them really good, there'll be little flecks of different colors in the salad. Up to you. I'm going to let you make so that you mean call. Like, like, like either cube them or. You could slice them and have them similar to the beets, uh -huh. all the same similar sizes, or you can chop them up a little bit smaller. And as they get mixed in, they'll have a little sprinkle. It's okay. the look that you're going for and how you want the mouthfeel to be. Okay. For, you know. Okay, so you take the you knife. Do you do All that. Right. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to run and go get, I've got to get one more ingredient, I think, for the shrimp, and maybe two. Let me check this out. I'm going to read the box again. We've got the butter. Yeah, I need to get some onion, and I need to get some uh, Worcestershire sauce. So let me go get that. And I've also got cheese under my hands, in my, under my nail. So let me get that figured out while you're doing that. I know these are just carrots, but having a sharp knife is so important. It really is. It makes a world of difference. And even though they're just carrots, I can tell that this is a sharp knife. Well, Carl, they're new. Yeah. That they're that new doesn't knives. Hurt, right? They're new <laughs> knives because I decided that I needed to have some knives. I really need a couple of other new things in this kitchen. I really want a brand new refrigerator. Mm -hmm. But I already have three, so Brian's a little bit reluctant to give me any more than that because he thinks that I don't need three. But guys, we should take the vote of hands. Mentioned in the episode, I think I need a third refrigerator because I need to have a place to put like the salad finished. I already have the stuff, refrigerator stuff full of mm -hmm. ingredients, right? But I need like to be able to put some stuff in that can just, you know, have space and mm -hmm. plus I also want a refrigerator that has nothing but drinks in it that's important go. to me as well there we go all right so guys the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the shrimp mm. I'm going to move you over just a little bit my first thing I'm going to do is tell you that this recipe and also my own personal recipe is not heart healthy if you want to try to make it heart healthy you better be my guest but I have not found that putting a substitute for just butter with the shrimp works very well. You can maybe do it half olive oil and half butter. But for me personally, I'm all about it tasting good. If that's the only thing I eat in one day that tastes good, I'll eat lettuce the rest of the day. There I just want to have it taste <laughs> like it's supposed to. So there's two sticks because we're doing two and a half pounds. Each box that you buy from the Cajun Spoon, again, not sponsored, you get uh, the ingredients that you need for one pound. So you need two boxes. We're going to do two pounds of shrimp, and you just double up what you're doing. So what you're going to add, we devein these, um, and you're going to add to it Worcestershire sauce, mm -hmm. and okay. you're going to add a little bit of onion powder. Now, you could add onion, too, if you wanted to. It's up to you, whatever you want to do with that. But... And then they come with their own packets. I'm going to get a little bit of onion powder. Those uh, purple carrots look nice. They're beautiful. I love them. That's one of the reasons why yesterday before we did this episode, I, when I knew what I wanted to do for you guys for the salad, I wanted to go get specifically those carrots exactly that way, those tricolors, because mm -hmm. we've already pulled all of our carrots from the garden, and I wanted them to have a specific look for for the channel and for you guys to see how pretty they are. All right, so this is the spice kit, and you just take the spice kit and you dump it on top of the shrimp, and you can let it sit for, you can let it sit if you wanted to overnight. You don't have to, as you're getting ready to watch me do right now. You do not have to do that. And that spice kit comes in that box? Yep, you got a pack of grits and a pack of spice. Okay. And what you need to make that recipe is water and butter and onion powder and um, a little bit of Worcestershire. Are we doing all of these uh, carrots? So I'm gonna get, no, you don't have to. Okay. 
turn the butter up on the on the stove top and I'm going to take the shrimp and just stir them into the spice just like that and what I'm going to do because for some reason everybody in this house is sensitive to fishy smells I'm going to take a little bit of this lemon oh. and add it to the shrimp just because it doesn't matter what fish we're cooking or what shrimp I'm doing or scallops or anything it always for some reason they ask me at the table even though I've served them their Is dinner <laughs> no they want to know if they can get some extra lemon ah. sometimes without even taste without even tasting my cooking which makes me mad for those of you all that know me really well because I'm like I didn't serve it to you wrong so you need to be respectful and eat it the way it was brought to you on the table. I'm kind of like that chef at the restaurant that when somebody comes in and wants That's to order salt. some medium well done beef, uh -oh. I just roll my eyes because if it's not bloody and running, then it's not right. Well, my mother-in-law sends that. it back to the prime <laughs> rib till it's gray and like a piece oh, of shoe leather. No, I've come a long way. You know, it's funny, even though I am barbecue guy and heck we get a cow slaughtered and my family has cows and everything else you know i actually come when i was a kid it was well done that's all i wanted and as i got a little older i moved to medium uh, well and i think now i straddle the line between medium and medium rare i could i can do um but yeah i mean and it does it has a lot more flavor it's good that way, I will admit. Let me see what you got going on over here. I was thinking what, either this or do that this this little bitty one and call it or, or leave I'd it I'd do that little bitty one and call it. We got okay. a little bit. We'll wait a little bit on that butter. Check on those grits. Yeah, how are those grits? Did I Well, did that I drop spoon is hot there? as blazes back here. I just burnt my <laughs> finger on it, so uh -oh. that's not good. Uh -oh. Let me taste it and see what's happening back here. They're done. All right. And they're good. But I don't want to touch that spoon because it's a metal spoon. All right, I'm going to turn off these uh, cabbages. And they are gorgeous. I'm going to pull them off the stove top, yes, or not stove top, out of the oven, and let them sit be for a minute. All I right. do not think, for you guys watching, I do not believe in my heart of hearts that that took 40 minutes. And I, I believe the reason why again is because it came straight from the garden so yeah. they are done though i can tell you from looking at it eyeball to eyeball that they are done so this i need you to now cook the shrimp okay you got two sticks of butter in there that's it you got go the shrimp coated uh -huh, go ahead and put them in okay and while you're doing that i'm going to finish up this salad oh this smells good so i've got about a half a cup of toasted almond not toasted almonds sliced almonds and then I've got a, here's our dressing. Let me whisk it a little bit more. I mean, you can't go wrong with butter. I, I know you said not necessarily hard healthy, but mm. I know. It you sure know, does taste good. the thing I feel about that is, is that there's two things. One is they put the stents in and it was fully blocked. And he looked at me and he couldn't believe I was still even here because mm -hmm. I had all these heart attacks nobody knew I'd had. And they fixed it. Well, hell, they fixed it. That should mean if they fixed it and they put a springer in there, I'm good to go to have a little butter from time to time. Don't you think? I don't think we should deprive Auntie A of that. <laughs> I'm not saying I should have it every day, but if you're going to cook a recipe right, it needs to have a little butter, especially when you're dealing with that one right there. Uh, this is a beautiful salad. Beautiful, beautiful salad. So you just stir in all your ingredients, your goat cheese and your beets. Let them be the superstars. You got those carrots for color and texture, the watercress, the parsley. That's just the right amount of dressing for that amount of salad. You could take this to lunch with a grilled cheese sandwich. This is something somebody could do a really quick, easy 
uh, leftover, I'm talking of leftovers, Yeah. with this. This is a great cold lunchbox, just really a great salad. So what I've got here is some microgreens, and I love these. I've, grow, I've grown these in the Sweet Life Garden. These are not mine, um, but I've got a lot of microgreens that I do in the Sweet Life Garden, and they're so wonderful for a couple of reasons. One, they look beautiful. Yeah. And two, they're just full of nutrients. And so, again, if you can get a kiddo to pretend like that's fairy hair, make up a story, <laughs> you can try to get somebody little to eat something good for them without them thinking that they're doing that. The more you don't pay attention to the good stuff, talking about it, the more chances that they're going to actually eat it. That's that child psychology degree that mm -hmm. I've got, <laughs> which has come in handy more than we know. Are we All done right. with the do here? We are, and I'm going to just leave it right there. So we've got, we've got our salad. We've got our beautiful cabbage with the date drizzle. And this smells really good. Shrimp yeah. is almost done. I'm going to go grab the platter for those. They're turning up pink and pretty. They look really, really delicious. Just have to turn pink for us. Yeah. I'm going to wash my hands, guys. And I'm going to get the platter so we can put down the shrimp and the, and the grits and show you everything finished up. How are you coming along? Almost there. Okay, I'm going to wash my hands. So would you say this was a staple for you growing up in no. North Carolina? No, 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 no. No, we had roast and we had spaghetti and we had, like I said, Hathaway's fried chicken and mm -hmm. we had a lot of collards and turnips and a lot of mashed potatoes, a lot of pecan pies. Yeah. We just didn't have a lot of shrimp. We didn't do a lot of seafood. And when we did do seafood, we went to a restaurant and we'd go and Daddy would sit at one end of the table and, you know, five kids and Nana. I do know. And we'd have the whole family out to do seafood. And she'd get oysters and Daddy would get the seafood platter and we'd get the deviled yeah. crabs. And we just didn't do a lot of that. What we did a lot of, though, that was seafood is Daddy would go over and get a container of raw oysters. And when he wasn't delivering babies, we'd sit at the chopping block in the middle of the kitchen and he'd put horseradish with some ketchup in there, cold, and we would dip those cold oysters so into a, that. You're a big oyster person. Oh, yeah. You know, Devonda was telling me the other day, she actually mentioned, she was like, you know, I really wish that I liked oysters because the people that eat them make them look so good, right? I said, you're not lying because I'm not big on them either. Now, I, I can eat them. I don't think I'm as grossed out as she is about it, but I'm more like, I like clowns, you know, whatever. But I, I guess it's completely different. But the oysters, for people that it's eat them, good man, stuff, they, man. they make them look like... Oh. It's good stuff. I'm going to go ahead and chop up that parsley. Where did I put it? Where did it go? Oh, it's over here. I'm going to chop up the parsley because that's what gets sprinkled on top of that shrimp, guys, as soon as we're done with the shrimp. I'm going to chop it up over here. I know I'm off camera, and I apologize for that, guys. Now they're getting close, if not already there. They're, they're pretty. Pretty ready to roll. Man. My mouth watering over here. Yep. I believe it. I'll tell you what. All right. Let me come in here, and I'll pull that off of there. All right. Can you get in there? Nope. Nope. I want you to help me as soon as I get over here to this. You want me to... You got it? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Ow. Burn oh. me. 
When you it, get it. It was because that was wet, and that's why. Yep. Okay. So what we're going to do is let's spoon that into that bowl. Okay. So we don't Juice get. Juice and all? Well, we want some of the butter. We just don't want all of the butter. I said juice. It is butter. Yes. It is butter. It is butter. Try to be a little conscientious there. Got it? Mm -hmm. While you're doing that, I'm going to get, watch your hand there because that's a hot, it's hot. Mm -hmm. No joke. It's so hot, my sweet lifers, that Auntie A is going out to the Sweet Life Garden to get some aloe vera to fix what she's done to her finger. Mm -hmm. And she's glad it's on her left hand and not her shooting hand. Because my right, <laughs> my whole right side, I'm very protective of that. Anytime anybody wants to put a needle in my arm or mm -hmm. run a stent to my heart or do anything else to me, for the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm like steer clear of the right side. So good, good lesson learned there. Uh, I mean, a lot of y'all watching probably already know that, but I, I know a lot, a lot of people that cook for themselves have learned that Potholders are great unless they're wet. When then they, they get ain't wet, worth a toot. They don't, they don't do very good yeah, for you. So yeah, check the potholders. Check the potholders. Okay, so there you go. We've got the shrimp right there. Okay. I'm going to let me get the right side of the potholder and move this over just, a, nope, just a little right. bit because i got to show them what to do next. This last piece of this. This is a very important step mm. for you guys. So we're going to come over here. That pot, that that spoon was a little bit warm earlier. Okay, we're gonna come over here. And we're gonna get a great big old okay. scoop of grits. Okay, and I smush them down like that. This is the secret here. Huh? And we got enough to feed an army, so I hope that you're all gonna want some of this tonight at your house because we're gonna be sharing. We're nice. gonna be doing that. I think every time we do our little episodes, we're just gonna be sharing our food each each week. I'm grab a, a grab a I don't little, I don't miss meals. Grab a little this? green. Nope, I got it. I want you to take this butter out of this pan. And drizzle. And drizzle. Oh yeah. Drizzle it on there like that, right? Mm -hmm. So you can control how much you get. Shake it down a little bit so it gets on that grits. But I want that's, you to look at that guys. That's experience right that's there. That's some that good shake. stuff right there. <laughs> that's some good stuff right there. So here you go. You've got the most beautiful cabbage drizzled in date syrup and mustard seed from the garden you've got a beautiful salad with microgreens with goat cheese our yeah. favorite beets and carrots and we've got a beautiful shrimp and grits for you guys listen i hope you and i are going to be eating here in a second oh man i'm ready <laughs> i know i hope that you guys have found value in what we've showed you today we sure look forward to helping you guys figure out some cool and fun things to do in the kitchen for your family if you did find value do me a favor like and share and don't forget to Ring that bell so that you're notified right. each week whenever we drop a new episode. And we look forward to seeing you soon on the channel. Take care. Thank you, guys.